Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Carrying on with my series where I'm looking at a small part of my collection where there's some similar properties. As you can see most probably, this time I'm going for reddish pens. And I'm going very ish, because some of these are tending more towards like the dark end of the red. But I thought it's a nice little selection. And I will be honest, when I started looking at this, I didn't have as many red pens as I originally thought I did. So it was quite interesting when I was going through. Join me now, down on the table, we'll take a little look at each pen, and then we'll do a writing sample with them. And as we're going along, I'll be giving my thoughts on these. Welcome down to the table. Five of my red pens or reddish pens. This ended up being quite difficult. I thought I had more red pens than I actually do have. So I've gone for reddish because some of them, yes, there's a lot of red in them, but they're not exactly what I would call as red, but they do fit with this reddish theme. So we're going to go in price order. We're going to start with this. This is a Jinhao 997. Definitely a red pen, isn't it? Very nice. I think a nice classy look. Flat ends. The cap pulls off. Nice, satisfying click. Got a nice lengthy section there, which is tapering down. Got a bit of ridging at the bottom, which actually works really well. I hold my pens down near the bottom. I find that really handy. But what's nice about this, the nib, it's a 1.1 stub nib. Most of the Jinhao pens I get, they're either fine or medium. It was nice to be able to get a different nib. Got a converter in here. I've had to prime the feed. One of the issues I get with this pen, I think it's because of the stub, it's terrible for hard starting. So although I've just written with it before I started recording, it may or may not hard start when we come to write with it. Once you get past that hard start though, once it starts writing, it's beautiful, the ink flows really well. Nice size in the hand, nice balance as well. So we've got here, a gin how can you see what I'm saying there? So normally what I do, just shake it a couple of times. Let's see if we can get right in. There we go. And as you can see, writes beautifully now. So a Jinhao 997. Beautiful natural line variation. See, this is a 1.1 stub nib. Price-wise, six Aussie dollars. It's a Chinese pen. I can put up with these little issues for six dollars. The ink is by Colt Pens. And it's Little Bob. So this is a sheen in ink. As this dries, we'll come back in a, in a few minutes and we'll have a look at it, see if we can see the sheen. Drying times, so we go immediate. 10 seconds. Thirty seconds. One minute. See there, after 30 seconds, we're now getting back where we're getting a, another hard start. Let me give it a couple of shakes. Let's get this going again. And here we go. One minute. After a minute, still smudging a little bit. I'm not going to do a two-minute test, though. This paper, I know I forgot to mention it, this is Ayush paper, made in India, 100 GSM. It's got a nice bit of texture to it. Let's just take a look at this sheen where it's dried. So we've got this beautiful green sheen coming through there. Hopefully this is capturing on the camera. You know, it may look a bit gold, but to my eye, it's it's like a nice, gorgeous green sheen. Let's just do our grid. So again, hard starting again. A couple of shakes. And off we go. So up and down side to side so there we can see the the natural line variation in there so that's the Jinhao 997 as I say it's six dollars hard starts all the time once it's writing writes beautifully and, you know, $6, I don't care if it hard starts. You know, it still does what I want. I just know I've got to shake it to get it going. Up next, we're going to jump to India. 
and we're going to look at the Fountain Pen Revolution Darjeeling. Now, Fountain Pen Revolution is a US-based company. Pens are made in India. So that's why I'm classing this as coming from India. That's where it's made. It's a very light pen, whereas with the 997, that's got more of a metal body, so there's more weight to it. The Darjeeling is quite light. Nice red, though. I do like it. Number of different colours available. The cap screws off. And then we've got all plastic body. If we open it up, we do have in there a converter. Came with a converter, but all plastic, loads of threads. Potentially, you could eyedropper this. I've not tried it. I don't intend to try it, but it's nice to have an option, isn't it? Bit of a shorter section, but it's wider and it does feel wider. And I find that nice and comfortable to use. I do like wider sections. We've got a number six steel nib there. So we've got here a, I'm just going to call it FPR for pen, Fountain Pen Revolution. The model is the Darjeeling. And this is a medium nib. Price wise, we are jumping up. We're now talking 20 Aussie dollars. Still a nice affordable pen. The ink in here is by Diamine. And it's just called Classic Red. Nice darker shade in there. Colour. We do see a bit of shading. Like here where I've got that, that chevron coming down. That does appear lighter. But then we've got darker on the M. So we get a little bit of natural shading. Which does look quite nice. Drying times. So we go immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. One minute. After a minute, this one, that's nice and dry. Let's do our grid. I wonder if I can get them all about the same size today. So up and down. Side to side, diagonally, and then squares. Nice nib. I do find the nib on this, it feels a bit smooth. I would have liked a little bit more feedback on it. That's a very personal choice. The pen does feel a bit on the light side. That's one of the downsides, but it's a plastic pen. So, you know, I accept that. It's a $20 pen. You know, what more do you want? It's another nice affordable pen. So that's the Fountain Pen Revolution Darjeeling. Let's move this page up ever so slightly. There we go. So we're going to go back to China for the next pen. And we're going to go for the Hondian 1841. I have tried to fetch out a number of different brands. The idea is I should only have one pen from each brand. And given I haven't got that many red pens, it wasn't too difficult to do. This is nice. This we're starting to get a bit of a darker red now, going a bit more crimsony. Very classic looking pen though, isn't it? I've got this in black as well, and they both look really nice. It's a pen you could take anywhere. You could quite happily take this to a business meeting. It's another one, cartridge converter. There we go, there's a converter. Comes with a converter. Metal fittings this time though. Again, a shorter section. Tapers down, a little bit of a teeny tiny lip at the bottom. Does feel a bit on the short side. You can post it. I find this is not too bad unposted, but it's nice to know you can post it. And again, we've got a number six nib there. This is a Hondian nib. I like the two-tone nature of the nib. That's the problem with the Darjeeling, with it being just that silvery colour or that steel colour. At least this gives a little bit more visual interest. So this is the Hongdian, and it's the 1841, and this has got a fine nib on it. Price-wise, we're jumping up in price, we're doubling in price, we're up to 40 Aussie dollars now. The ink by Diatramentis, and it's cherry, so this ink does have a cherry smell to it, obviously from the name of the ink. You can't smell it once it's down on paper. 
what I tend to do is you can get it when you're filling the pen, but once you've written with it, the smell fades very, very quickly. Drying times. So we go immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. One minute. After a minute, still smudging ever so slightly. Again, not enough to do a two minute test. Now, just for the full picture, the temperature here is currently 23 Celsius. The humidity is 80%. And I do have a desk fan going, which is blowing over the paper. All effects slightly the drying time. So it's just so you've got the full picture. Let's do our grid. I'm trying to keep them all the same size. I know I've said that a few times. It's one thing I struggle with, getting them all the same size. So we go up and down, side to side, diagonals, and then squares. A little bit of a skip there. That could have been me the other way I had the pen. This nib is very smooth, smoother than I found with that fountain pen revolution one. This is one I haven't done it yet. I may eventually, I might do a little bit of work on this nib to introduce a little bit more feedback. My personal choice, I like feedback on my nibs. And this one, just very smooth. Not, not ice smooth, but it's as if it's just gliding over the paper rather than having that gorgeous tactileness. So that's the Hongdian 1841. Just dropping in to interrupt your regular programming. Would you like to help support the channel? If so, please consider joining as a member. As a member, you'll get early access to my videos. I normally upload them a couple of days before they go out. And as soon as they're uploaded, they'll be released to members. There'll also be a shout out at the end of the videos. And then as we get the members coming in, we'll actually chat among ourselves and work out what other perks, what other things you'd like me to add in. You know, would you like maybe a monthly live chat just for members? all down to us so please if you can consider joining the channel a link will be in the description down below two more pens to go so the next one as i say i was struggling with red pens so this is where we're now getting into that reddish we're taking a big jump in price the next one is the twisby draco lots of pinks lots of crimsons lots of you know bits of red in here that's why i think and get away with this as being a red pen certainly a bigger pen than the previous ones we've seen this one from taiwan this is a piston filler so we've got a piston mechanism here we've got a little ink window i've got to be honest the ink window i find next to useless the whole window is not for showing the ink what you've got inside there is you've got the bottom of the reservoir that's in the actual body and you can just see part of that. So it doesn't even take up the full width of it. So it makes it quite difficult to see what the ink levels are. That's one of the downsides, which is a shame. Piston filling pen takes an awful lot of ink. I like the section. The section is very nice, comes down nicely and flares out. Very comfortable to hold. You know, as I say, I hold my pens down near the bottom. This is really comfy. You could try person. It doesn't really post. And where it does hold on to, it's actually the bottom of the mechanism here. So you'd have to be careful that you don't accidentally turn it and end up ejecting ink. I know this is something people that are regular viewers of the channel. I don't like the nib on this. It's too small. Should have been a number six nib. This looks really odd compared to the rest of the pen, which is about the only thing that lets it down. And it's such a shame. So we've got here a Twisby. Draco. This has got a broad nib on it. Price wise, as I said, we've taken a jump in price. You're looking at about $215. I don't think you can buy these brand new. These were a limited run. So I think you can only get them now on the second hand market. The ink is by Dye Mine. And it's Red Dragon. This is an ink I generally try and pair with this pen. Dragon named pen, dragon named ink. I think it just works really well. And I think the colour wise, I think they're quite a good colour match for each other. 
drying time so we go immediate 10 seconds 30 seconds one minute wow that's still extremely wet for this one i'm going to go on the line above i'm just going to do a two minute test two minutes there we're still smudging so in today's weather conditions with this Ayush paper the diamine red dragon ink and the twisby draco very wet combo let's do our grid so ups and downs the ink from this just flows so well as much as i don't like the nib it's a beautiful writing pen i really do like writing with this pen So I just think that nib looks odd. Very personal choice again, though, there. So that's the Twisby Draco and Diamine Red Dragon. The final pen, we're going to take another massive jump in price. Again, calling these reddish. Let's move this up ever so slightly. Got here the Waterman Karen in marine amber. So very reddy colours in there, like a darker red more maybe crimsony with hints of orange where i think that that's where the amber comes from very classy very stylish pen made in france beautifully made beautiful field with nice white it's a cartridge converter there we've got a converter there did come with that converter the section very long long looking section it's black and we come down to this gorgeous embedded nib this is an 18 karat gold nib all the other pens they've been steel nibs beautiful looking pen extremely classy feels so nice in the hand you can post it personally i don't it's a nice length and i worry if i'm gonna post it i'll end up scratching this material and I'll, I'll post it in videos just to show, but normal day-to-day -day use, I don't. Because of the way the section is, you can really hold it anywhere. I still hold it quite low down. Nice, comfortable pen to use, though. I think I, say, I know I've said it once. I'll say it loads of times. Very classy looking. So we've got here a Waterman Karen. Gorgeous pen. And it comes with a medium, and it's 18 carat gold. You're paying, you really are. I priced this up just before I started the video, 430 Aussie dollars to buy. Lot of money. Is it worth it? Very difficult to say. You know, it's a lot of money for a pen. I personally think it's worth it though. The ink. Is by Diamine and it's Ots Blood. This is one of those to me. This is virtually a perfect pairing. This pen and this ink work so well together. Drying times, so we go immediate. 10 seconds. Nearly dry there, isn't it? 30 seconds. Still smudging, so we'll go for that one minute test. After a minute there, you know, we've seen from the 30 seconds, that's dry. Let's do the grid. Then we'll go diagonal. And up and down. This is another very smooth writer. I expect that though. I mean, 18 karat gold. There's a little bit of softness to it. It just glides over the paper. To be honest, I wouldn't do anything to this nib. It is so nice. I accept there's not a lot of tactileness to it, but the, the expression you get when you're writing with it is absolutely gorgeous. 
So that's the Waterman Karen. I'm going to move this up. What I'm now going to do is write with each pen. I'm going to write my sentence. And as I write each sentence, I'll have the mic next to the page so you can hear the pen writing. We'll start with the 997. I've just shook it to get it writing. That one, I can't get the full sentence on the page. I'm not going to go into a second line. It's a 1.1 stub nib. I'm not overly worried about it. There's next to no feedback. The ink, it's just like writing with a paintbrush. The ink, once it's flowing, just flows so well. Very nice. Very comfortable to use as well. I like the weight in it. With now the Fountain Pen Revolution Darjeeling. A lot nicer, a bit more feedback to that. Got a bit of tactileness to it. Just feels quite light. Couldn't really hear much though. Not sure what the mic caught on there. The Hondian 1841. Again, very smooth, next to nothing coming either audibly or tactilely. You know, just a nice gliding of the paper. Now, although the 1841, this is a fine nib, and the Darjeeling, that's a medium, to me the line width looks virtually identical. Next up, we'll go to that Twisby Draco with a broad nib. Again, very nice, very smooth, not a lot of tactileness, not a lot of audible feedback either. The wind is now taking the page. So finally, we've got the Waterman Karen. This has got that medium gold in it. To me, this medium nib is very generous. And from what I've seen from a number of other reviews of the Karen, it does seem that it is a very generous nib. It looks nearly the same width to my eye as what we're seeing with that broad nib. Very nice. Of, so that was that Waterman Karen. Let me just move this down. We'll fetch all five pens in. See if we can get all five there on the page at the same time. So we've got the 997, the Fountain Pen Revolution, the Hondian, no, that's not the Hondian, is it? This one's a Hondian, 1841. The Twisby Draco, and we've got the Waterman Karen. Five very nice pens. Five pens at very, very different price points. My favourite is the Waterman Karen, I'm going to be honest. It's also the most expensive. But bang for the buck, I think you've really got to look at the Fountain Pen Revolution Darjeeling and the Hondian 1841. They're both very good value pens, both good performing pens. I think looks wise, the 1841 just looks a little bit more professional, whereas the Fountain Pen Revolution one, it looks what it is. It looks like it's a plastic pen. But when you look at price, you know, that Fountain Pen Revolution for $20, very good value, good pen, Number of different colour choices. This one is red. 
and I think, yeah, really good value. So these are my thoughts on five of my reddish pens. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What red pens do you have or reddish pens do you have? How do you pick the inks that go in them? That's something which I think is always interesting. Please drop a comment down below. Let's kick start the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment. Well, it just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.